Okay, so tomorrow we have a quiz on inverse trig one, I guess. I think you have four graphs to draw and then that was to do. Okay, no questions? Wow. Very good. Does everybody understand why M is undefined? Yes. And not 3. Okay, then we start, try inverse trig 2. Okay, so what I'm going to do here to make your homework shorter, I'll do examples right off the homework. So whatever I do on the board, you don't have to do it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve equations. Okay, so I'll do 1a. 1a is good. 1a. 2 sine inverse x equals cosine inverse x. Okay, now how do you solve it? Of course, if you have a graphic calculator, you're easy, right? Make one side zero, graph it, wherever it crosses the x-axis, that's your answer. So no calculator. So we're going to treat this like any other equation. You can do the same thing to both sides of the equation. You can square both sides. You can add 5 to both sides. You can divide both sides by 7. You can natural log both sides. You can e both sides. You can sine, cosine, or tangent both sides. So what do you think? How do you think I'm going to get rid of the inverse? You either sine, cosine, or tangent both sides. So what do you think? Well, first, we, we don't want to really tangent both sides, right? No. So it's 50-50 shot in here. Do I want to sine both sides or cosine both sides? What do you think? Now, look, you've got to have at least some foresight. Okay, here. What if you were to sign both sides? Then you would get this. If you were to cosine both sides, you get this. Okay, forget foresight. Let's just write it all out. Here. Cosine of cosine inverse x. Which equation looks easier to solve, A or B? Well, on the left side, no matter what, you're gonna, you have to use double angle identity, right? Sine 2 theta or cosine 2 theta. But the right side, I want to see green paper. The tardy slip or money. Oh, uh, my teacher says she'll email what? you. What? My teacher says she'll email you. And who is this teacher? Um, Akamine. Again, Akamine Sensei. I'll come in and say strike one. <laughs> no, that's strike two. Oh, you're cleaning your brushes, that's why. Uh, no. <laughs> that's what she told me last time, you guys had to clean the brushes. No, we had a oral test, so then we ran out of time. So we had to go in order and then we were the last group. I'll come in. How come she doesn't just write you a note? She said, I don't know, she just asked for your name and I said, she just doesn't give you a name. Like, whatever. <laughs> okay, now, the, anyway, the left side of the equation, you're going to use double angle identity no matter what, but the right side, look at the right side of the equation, which one is easier to solve? A or B, which one is easier? B. B. So let's, do, you know why? Because what did we learn from last night's homework? Cosine of cosine inverse gorilla is? Gorilla. Whereas if you do this one, how, how do you solve this one? You gotta draw the triangle, right? Which is not that hard. Here, someone going, what are you talking about drawing the triangle? How do you draw an angle that's cosine inverse x? So here's theta, 
cosine is adjacent over a hypotenuse, and then you use the Pythagorean theorem. So the sine of this angle would be opposite over a hypotenuse. And then you would get an ugly radical there. Right? You did last night's homework, right? Isn't that what you did? Except you did it with numbers, right? But you can do it with variables, too. Okay, then what about this one? How do I compute the cosine of 2 sine inverse x? So, so this one, you've got to draw a triangle. Here, just draw it here. How do you draw an angle that's sine inverse x? Opposite over hypotenuse, right? And then use the Pythagorean theorem. Hope you guys can do that. So what is the identity for cosine of 2 theta? Now you got Well, actually, if you're smart, you don't even have to draw that triangle. Which of the three identities you want to use for cosine 2 theta? If you have any foresight. Yeah, 1 minus 2 sine squared theta, which is sine inverse x. See, if you use this one, you don't have to draw that triangle. Because what is sine of sine inverse x? x, and then you square it. Then let me draw a triangle. You guys know what I mean? Otherwise, if you use the cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta, then you've got to look at this triangle. Cosine theta is this over that, then you've got to square it minus sine theta, which is this over that, and square that. But it doesn't matter. You can use any of the three. You're going to get that. See, now, by cosigning both sides, now look. I have an equation without any trig functions in it. Now we've reduced it to just algebra 1. And then what kind of equation is this? Quadratic. So make one side 0. And again, make the first term positive so you guys don't make any mistakes. Now, is this factorable, or do I have to use quadratic formula? That's factorable. How do you know? Because I'm looking at the answers on the bottom. Plus, minus, so x equals 1 half or negative 1. Box that, that's the answer. No. Now, when, when do we check our answers for equations? When do you have to check? When you square both sides? When you have a fractional equation? When you have a log equation? Because anytime you have log, the argument got to be positive. And when you have an inverse trig equation. So every single equation on this thing, you got to check. And that's because they have restricted ranges. That's why. You guys, have you guys got the restricted ranges down yet? Or just wait till tomorrow morning? It's up to you. So the, the bottom line is you have to check every answer. So you take both of these and you plug it back into the original. OK, so plug in 1 half. What is sine inverse 1 half? Pi over 6 equals, what is cosine inverse 1 half? Pi over 3. Is that true? Wait, let me get my calculator. Yeah. Okay, now plug in negative 1. 2 times sine inverse negative 1, which is? Negative pi over 2. Come on, you guys said you did last night's homework. Cosine inverse negative 1. Cosine of what angle is negative 1, but it's got to be in the range. You guys better know this tomorrow. This is tomorrow's quiz. Pi, is that true? Is negative pi equal to pi? No. Wait, let me get my calculator. No, it's not. So you got to cross that out. So the only answer is 1 half. So that's how you solve all of these equations. Either you sine, cosine, or tangent both sides, and then you check your answers. It's quite easy. Well, if you practice. OK, I will do B for you. Are these the two easiest ones? No, not necessarily. But probably. OK, what do you think I'm going to do on this one? Sine both sides, cosine both sides, or tangent both sides? <laughs> well, since you see tan inverse, probably you got tan in both sides, right? Because the tangent of tan inverse armadillo is armadillo. So tangent both sides. Now, when you tangent this side, do not distribute the tangent, or that's going to be a fatal error, people. You tangent both sides like this. Got to do the whole, just like when you square, you don't distribute the square, right? Although some of you did, I remember. Okay, so tangent gorilla plus banana. There's an identity for that, right? Tangent of the first plus tangent of the second. I'm just writing it all out. After a while, you don't even have to write it. You can just see, right? Can you, can you see that tan of tan inverse 2 is just 2? So you can just write 2 if you want. All over 1 minus tangent gorilla, tangent banana. I'll just write it out for the first time. 
So you get tangent x equals 10 of 10 inverse 2 is 2. 10 of 10 inverse 3 is 3. 2 times 3. Woo! Now what does that come out to? 5 over 1 minus 6, which is negative 1. Oh, comes out to negative 1! Okay, now I'm pretty sure everybody can do that, but now here's the thinking part. We're trying to solve for x here. x is, remember, inverse trig functions are angle measurements, right? So x is equal to this angle plus that angle. Okay? So tangent of the angle we're looking for is negative 1. Now, where is tangent negative 1? Well, there's an infinite number of answers, right? There's pi over 4. What else? Not pi over 4. There's 3 pi over 4. There's 7 pi over 4. There's negative pi over 4. There's an infinite number of answers, right? You have to pick the correct one. Now, this is what a lot of people do, which is just totally inept. They go, oh, to solve for x, just 10 inverse both sides. So x equals 10 inverse negative 1. Hey, that's a number I know. What's 10 inverse negative 1? Negative pi over 4. And then they go, oh, that's your answer. Wrong. You can't do that. Anyway, how can the answer be negative 45 degrees? When, how can you add two positive <coughs> angles and get negative 45 degrees? I don't know, Mr. Park, but I did it. You cannot. Look. So what you do is you draw a picture. Remember I told you, how do you draw an angle that's arc tangent 2? You make opposite over adjacent 2 to 1. So you make a 2 to 1 ratio like this. That's arc tangent 2. Now add to that an angle that's arc tangent 3. So here, like this. So you, you make this 1, and then you go 1, 2, 3. Right? Make a right triangle. If the ratio is 3 to 1, here, 2 to 1, then isn't this angle here arc tangent 3? So if you add them together, what does that look like? Negative 45 degrees? Or does it look like 135 degrees? Yeah, that's the answer. Or does that look like 315 degrees? No, the answer is no. 315 degrees, are you crazy? 315 degrees would be like over here. Does, does that angle look like that? Wait, let me get my calculator. No. So like I tell my, the math team people, when we see a problem like this on, 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 on the math team test, draw the picture first, and then go, hey, that angle looks like 3 pi over 4. <laughs> and then you verify it doing this. So you can actually get the answer before you even start. But if you did this on the test, and this was worth 8 points, I can only give you 2. Because you've got to show work. Because when you draw it, how do you know it's 135? How do you know it's not 120 or 150? You know what I mean? How do you know it's 135? Also, it's the part. Inverse trig functions, they're kind of, I mean, it's, the procedure is not that hard, but you've got to do a lot of thinking. Yes. So I think you guys can handle, okay, I did two. Uh, okay, now I'll do is number three. Now, remember last chapter? I hope. Okay, I'll do a problem just like number two. Okay, how about, uh, woo, five, I don't want to make it the same, five cosine x minus 12 sine x. Now remember, when you have a sum of a cosine and a sine function with the same period, you can combine them together to just one sine or cosine function, right? Using the magic number. Okay, so we're going to do that again. Okay, but this time, the angle is not going to come out like pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 4, like it did in the last chapter. Okay, so first of all, what is the magic number? You guys remember? It's the square root of a squared plus b squared. 13. 5, 12, 13, right? So what do you do with this magic number? You factor it out. Okay, now if you factor out the 13, you can get 5 thirteenths cosine x minus 12 thirteenths sine x. See, last chapter that came out to 1 half and radical 3 over 2, right? But now it's not. But that's no problem for us because we've got inverse trig functions. 
Now, you can write, either write this as a sine or a cosine function. I will do a sine function. Okay, now, how do you change this to a sine function? Well, you need sine, cosine, cosine, sine, right? Isn't that the identity? So I want to change that to sine. Okay? So you got to think, sine of what angle will give me 5 thirteenths? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, give you, I'll give you a hint. Draw a triangle. The sine of what angle will be 5 thirteenths? Oh, that angle right there. And it's a 12 5 thirteenths triangle. Right? So remember, like yesterday, there's six ways of naming this angle. What's this angle? Sine inverse 5 thirteenths. Or you could say cosine inverse 12 thirteenths. Or you could say tan inverse 5 twelfths. Or you could say cotan inverse 12 fifths. You've got all six, right? But what's the bestest one? No, I told you yesterday, tan inverse. Tan inverse 5 twelfths. Now, if you want to put sine inverse 5 thirteenths, that's the same thing. That, that's fine. You can do that. You guys see that? See, before, it just came out to a nice angle that we do, right? Pi over 6, pi over 3, pi over 4. But now, it's not a nice angle, but it's actually easier because you don't even have to think. You just draw the triangle. You don't have to think like, oh, Okay, so sine of this is the 5 thirteenths, cosine x, minus, now, the cosine of what angle will give me 12 thirteenths? The same angle here, tan inverse 5 pro. Do you guys remember last chapter? Whatever angle you put here, it's the same angle there, otherwise you don't have an identity anyway, right? And now, hey, use somebody. Sine, cosine, minus cosine, sine. That's an identity. So this is the identity for sine gorilla minus a plus, minus gorilla. But like I told you last chapter, you have to put the x first. So can I just switch it like this? Can I switch the x and the, the, the tan inverse 5 twelfths? Yeah, you can, but you can put a minus in the front because sine is an odd function. Sine of negative theta equals negative sine theta. Like if it was cosine, you could just do it because cosine is an even function. But sine is odd, so you got to put the negative up there. So that's how you change. So now you can do any. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, the angle doesn't have to come out nice anymore. OK, anyway, that's, so I did like, so number two, do that. And then number three, number four, number five. Okay, you know what? I'm going to draw a picture for you for number six because every single year for the last 26 years, they always write this on the board. Mr. Park, I don't know what you're talking about. And you know what? Since this year we're so special, we're going to delete. Oh, my goodness. We're going to delete number five. Don't question me. If you want to do it for fun, you can, but we're just deleting. So on... Inverse, inverse trig two, delete number five. Okay, so let's look at number six. I think this one's going to be on the next quiz. If that's right here. In fact, every year I put it on, except I change it. A poster is three meters tall, and it is pasted to a wall directly in front of you. Just like here, this is a poster. The bottom of the poster is two meters above your eye level. Okay, so it's like the poster is up there, though, right? Okay. How far from the wall should you stand? Okay, so here's the poster. Oh, darn it. Wrong video. Okay, here's the poster. No, that's dumb. Here's the poster. How tall is the poster? Three meters tall. The bottom of the poster is two meters above your eye level. So here's your eye level. No, it's two meters above, so that's two. So here's here's your eye, here's your eyeball right there. Okay. How far from the wall should you stand? So what is this distance here? How far from the wall should you stand so that your viewing angle is as big as possible? Now what is your viewing angle? Well, if this is your eyeball and you're looking at, to, at the poster, what do you think your viewing angle is? It's the angle from here to there and then there to there, right? This is the viewing angle. Now, if you just think about 
If you have a poster over here, like if you're standing super close to it like this, it's hard to see it, right? Because the viewing angle is really small. But then if you start backing up, oh, I can see it better now, right? But then the farther back you go, then it, there's a point where the angle now, now it starts getting smaller. You know what I'm talking about? So how far from the wall should you stand so that the viewing angle will be as large as possible? That's the best place to stand to look at the poster. Now, did we learn how to compute maximum and minimum problems before? <laughs> okay, what are we trying to maximize in this problem? I want to read the problem. The viewing angle. So what you have to do is you have to write a function for the viewing angle so that you can graph it on your calculator. And then you guys remember how to calculate the maximum? Yeah, the hump. <laughs> oh, Mr. Park, you know what you get plenty humping, yeah? Okay, so we have to write a function for this angle right there. Okay, you know what? I'm just going to do it, and then you guys are going to do the calculator part. So we can save time tomorrow because we got the quiz anyway, right? Now, how do you compute this angle? Let's say you're in a Turkish prison. The only way you can get out of the Turkish prison is you got to compute this angle. Okay, let's, let's review what we learned yesterday. What if you have a 3, 4, 5 triangle? What's that angle right there? What? Clock? You're already in the doghouse already. 36.9. 53.1. No, that's approximations! Anyway, that's 36.9. This is the 53.1. What is the exact measurement of that angle? Tan inverse four thirds, or cotan inverse three fourths, or sine inverse four fifths, or cosine inverse three fifths, or <laughs> okay, tan inverse. But tan inverse is the just just get into the habit of doing tan inverse. That's the best one, right? Okay. Do I see a right triangle in this problem? I see two right triangles in this problem. Would you agree that this angle here is this big angle minus the small angle? Okay, what is this big angle here? It's 10 inverse 5 over x, opposite over adjacent, right? Minus, what is the small angle here? 10 inverse 2 over x. Now, you don't have to pick that inverse. If you want to use sine inverse or cosine inverse, you can, but then you've got to compute the hypotenuses of the right triangle using the Pythagorean theorem, right? But why, right? So does everybody see how we got that? So now all you have to do is graph this on your calculator, and then you should see how to calculate. You guys, you guys do that. Now I put this on the quiz last year, not tomorrow's quiz, but there's going to be another one later. All I did is I changed, I changed this to two, I changed that to three, I'll help real quick. <laughs> Your calculator got to be in radiant mode also now. Okay, so I, I practically did number six for you, but you, you got to practice punching it on your calculator to get the viewing window so you can see the hump. So this is the Y1 and this is X, right? Okay, now number seven. I don't want, I don't see anybody putting this on the board. How do you solve any equation or inequality on your calculator? You make one side zero and you graph it. And what are we looking for here? Oh gosh. Because, oh my goodness. I'm just going to do it because. Okay, make one side zero. I'm just spoon feeding you. It's not going to help you next year, you know. Graph this on your calculator, and what are we looking for? See, if it was equal zero, you're looking for the, where the graph crosses the x axis, right? But this is greater than zero, so what are we looking for? Where is the graph above the x-axis? If it was less than zero, below. You guys got it. This is in calculus next year. It's automatic. You see any equation or inequality, you shouldn't know how to solve it on a calculator. Just make one side zero and graph it. And then you just look at it. Okay, so hopefully we can do the rest. 
Okay, we're done then. Oh. Okay, so six plus six. Got it. No, got 18 minutes remaining. So while it's still fresh in your brain, well, you should probably do a couple of these. Yeah, like one C and D or something. So we're done with inverse trig function. So that means, yeah, we start tri trig tomorrow. I hope you guys remember law of sines, law of cosines. At least you guys remember that. One half r squared theta. He runs formula. S equals r theta. Because all of those things do everything. Okay.